Praise the Lord that God is so good. Amen. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. God, we thank you and we thank you for how you have blessed us. Lord, we on the end of a new year. This is the last Sunday that is in December. We're just asking God that you would bless us, that you would unveil with us with your love and your concern. As we live and move and have our being in you, we ask that you would touch every aspect of our lives and that you would empty out all of the negative and the things that don't belong. We ask God that you would come now and bless us in a special way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal that God knows the ones who belong to him. Let them that name the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. We're just glad to be here today. Oh, it's been a long and a trying year, but we're looking at the end that is of a new year. And as we look back at our lives and as we turn around and as we see some things that have happened, we can only admit that it was a God that brought us through. We thank you today. Amen. Sister Henry's going to, I mean, uh, Sister Henry's going to come to us at this time and she's going to share in music. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good
exalted far above the earth and the sky. Amen. Amen. We're bordering a new year, and I don't know what your new year re resolution is, but I do know one thing. God better be in it. Because when it comes down to dealing with asking God to do things, I don't know whether or not your car need to be paid off, I don't know whether you're going to get a new house, go on a diet, or whatever. But we need, need to do what? We need to go to God first. I thank God that he has blessed us on last year, and I'm looking for the same blessing on this new year. Amen? Amen. Amen. With that said, we're going to have a prayer song, and then we're going to the throne of grace. new life, 
And Lord, that's what you're all about, giving us life and the newness of it, Father. And Lord, as we come before you this morning, we thank you that you're that type of God, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you desire to move in our lives as we look forward at this new year. Lord, we don't know what's ahead of it. We don't know what challenges might be there. But know what, Father? We're going to take you along with us so that no matter what happens, we will be victorious. No matter what happens, Father, we will, Lord, be in position, Lord, to give you a blessing and to walk in your blessings, Father. We thank you for that, Lord. And Lord, we come praying right now, Father, that you would be right now with those that are in video land. The Lord they might have things on their mind that are challenging, Father. They might have some, some questions without answers, Father. They might see some things, Lord, they can't see into the future, Father, the way they would like to. It's foggy, Lord. But we come praying right now that, Lord, you would answer those questions, that you would give them peace in their heart that passes all understanding. Let it rule in their hearts today that they will trust in you that we would walk in you, Father, that we will allow you, Lord, to lead us each and every day. As we embark upon a new year, Father, let us realize, Father, it's a, a combination of 365 days, and you give us one day at a time to make progress. And Lord, we come praying right now that you would allow us, Lord, to, be, to, to, to uh, set in our, in our minds, Lord, that as we begin each day, we will begin it with you. That you would, Lord, be the first thing on our minds in the morning and the last thing on our minds at night. Yeah. We come praying right now that you would move in the right this way. Touch those that are, are dealing with, with, with uh, 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 physical challenges and health situations, Father. Lord, those that are dealing with emotional challenges, Father. They've lost loved ones in this past year, Father. We pray that you would comfort and consolate them. Give them hope, which you, only you can. We come praying right now, Father, that your anointing will be upon the word that's shared today. That it would give us direction, that it would inspire us, that it would give us light, that it would give us hope, Father. And that you might be glorified in all that's said in the furtherance of this service. And we thank you in advance for being faithful. We thank you in advance, Father, and pray to you for your goodness and your mercy. We ask that you would grant these things according to your son's Jesus' name. And we thank you again. Amen. God has allowed us to have a wonderful speaker today, amen. His academic regalia goes from kindergarten to an early PhD, and we thank him for being before us. Not only that, but he's been pastor of many at the Greenfield Church of God over 20 years. He's married, and not only that, he has a wonderful family. He loves the Lord. He loves the Lord, and not only that, he loves his word. And then how can you love God and not love his word? Amen. And yet, even if you, you, you weren't a preacher, you're not a preacher, you still can love God's word. We just thank God this morning. We know that as he comes, that he has much to share that God has given him. He's all of the day, and we thank God for him. Amen. And that is in the person of the proud uh, pastor of the Greenfield Church of God. We thank you in Jesus' name. We thank you.
Dr. Michael Cooper. Religious. 
the vice regents and governors conspired together and then went to the uh, king and said, King Darius, live forever. We've convened your vice regents, governors, and all your leading officials and have agreed that the king should issue the following decree. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which alter not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, this isn't looking bad. This isn't looking good, I should say, for Daniel. They have now signed and uh, the plot has been set in place. And so we see what happens in verses six and seven of this particular chapter. It says that the vice regents and governors conspired together and then went to the king and said, and addressed him as their custom was and said, King Darius, live forever. I know he was eating that up. <laughs> and so, uh, We've convened, and so they began to talk. We've convened your vice uh, governors and all your leading officials and have agreed that the king should issue the following decree. The trap is set. King Darius swallows the bait, hook, line, and sinker. Their envy is complete. Their jealousy fulfilled. We see in verse 8 and 9, it says this, Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which alter not. Therefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, now I want you to understand what's happened here is that they have, in essence, sealed Daniel's faith. He got in trouble because he was a worshiper of the true God. It's not looking good for him. Now, I want you to understand some things. The Medes and Persians, when they made a law, it was basically in, in stone. It couldn't be changed. And so now we look and we see that Daniel is in a mess because he worshiped and served God. But I want you to understand something. The scripture says that give thanks in everything for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. It's not looking good for Daniel. It's not looking good it seemed like for God. His man is about to be put into a situation. Now, when, now, now in verse 10, I love the way it reads. It says this, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his widow windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He knelt upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Daniel was not, this was not new to Daniel. He was a man who prayed three times a day and he wasn't about to change his, his routine just because a law had been passed. He was going to continue to talk to God about his situation. Amen. And you know, as we think about it, it scripture says he looked toward Jerusalem. Why was he looking toward Jerusalem? He was looking toward Jerusalem because he was remembering the prayer that Solomon had prayed. In 1 Kings, the 8th chapter, verses uh, uh, 22 through 30, but I, I just want to read uh, 29 and 30. It says that thine eyes may be open toward this house night and day, even toward the place of which Thou hast said, My name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. 
and hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel when they shall pray toward this place and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and when thou hearest forgive Daniel realized that even though he was away from Jerusalem he was in a foreign country he was still connected to God he was still able to talk to God because he remembered the prayer that Solomon had prayed that if they just turn toward the east if they just look toward Jerusalem. All they had to do was call on God. God would still hear their prayer. Then he said, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by any, uh, by all thy people, Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart, pledge of his own heart, shall uh, shall, uh, and spread forth his hand toward this house. In other words, Lord, when we stretch our hands out to you, we know we're in trouble. We know that our people have been disobedient, but when we look toward you, be merciful and forgive us. Amen. Daniel was really blessed. And then Daniel realized this. In Isaiah 59, 19, it says, So shall thy fear, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against it. Daniel was in a tight spot. Daniel had prayed and he had gone against everything that the king had signed. Though those uh, conspirators had set Daniel up, but it's good to be set up because you're worshiping God. Some folks are not going to be set up because they're not worshiping God. And so, the wonderful thing about this is Solomon prayed, God answered his prayer. But I want to tell you something else. Jesus prayed too. And the scripture says in John 2, 19, it says, Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the, of the throne of God. Jesus has prayed for us. I know that uh, Jesus took care of the situation in the temple in Jerusalem in AD 70. He was torn down to the ground. And, and the thing that they're looking at now they're calling the wailing wall is not the true wailing wall. temple was located in another part of Jerusalem. And in John 17 9 it says this I pray for them. I pray not for the world but for them which thou hast given me for they are thine and all mine are thine and all thine are mine and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou givest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Now let me explain just something about this son of perdition. This is a person who has heard the word, 
has experienced God, and yet they have chosen to go against God. They chose not to keep the faith. And so that's what Jesus is saying. I've kept everybody, and God is a, a, is a, a one who allows a person to make your choice. And, and the strange thing about it is that if you go to hell, you're going because you have chosen to go to hell. Because God has left the door open for whosoever will, let it come. So you and I know the story. And I want you to understand something. The scripture says this in Hebrews 2 and 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Listen. God's word stood when angels were given it. How much more because the word has come from himself in the person of Jesus Christ. Now, the events in the, in the Old Testament uh, it confirmed, it con is a, a confirming evidence of the divine word. Uh, it points out that a thing is firm, reliable, and on a firm foundation. That's what steadfast means. So God's word has stood. And then it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Looking to keep thinking about without having one's attention distracted. Looking to acquire information with focus primarily, uh, uh, presumably, upon the source of such information. Listen, God has blessed us. Now, back to Daniel. Daniel remembered that God was with him. Amen. And so, King Darius was sorry that he had signed that paper. He didn't realize that his main man was in jeopardy. He, I don't know, he, he didn't see Daniel with all the other ones when they had come, and so it, it slipped past him. They, they had pulled one on him. So what did he do? Scripture says he didn't eat, he was fasting, he was up all night trying to figure out how he could help Daniel out because he knew that when he spoke his word, it could be changed. Now I'm going to tell you something. When God speaks his word, Amen. it cannot be changed. So he has given us a Savior named Jesus Christ. And once that, once that mercy has been lifted once the, the opportunity for salvation has been taken away, God is not going to be up all night trying to figure out how he can save you. He's already set things into place for you and for me. And so the king, after he had realized his error, and Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, 
king went to the lion's den and he said something. He said, Daniel, is your God able to deliver? Remember all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And then in everything give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. And Daniel said to the king, I mean, he was so gracious and so kind. He said to the king, O oh, king, live forever. My God. And Daniel, uh, the scripture says that Daniel was taken up out of the lion's den. You know, I'm going to tell you something. 58 and a half years ago, I heard a man preaching the same sermon. And I was a young boy. And he gave the altar call. And I said, I'm like Daniel in the lion's den. Mm -hmm. And I asked Jesus to come into my life. I didn't have a fancy prayer. All I simply said was what a drowning man would say. And so Daniel was lifted out of that lion's den. And the ones who had sought to get him killed, the king had all of their family thrown in to that lion's den. And they said that the lions, the lions hadn't had anything to eat for a while. And it says that when they, before they even hit the bottom of the pit, the lions had jumped up and grabbed a hold to them as they were coming down. I want you to know that your situation, it may be that you say, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. You want to keep trusting God. You want to keep looking to God. You want to keep expecting him to bless you because he is still a God of love. He is still a God of mercy. He is still a God of long suffering. And he has not forgotten about you. Even though the enemy of souls may be plotting against you, I want you to know that you've got somebody on your side. Amen. That's the Lord. Don't you forget it. No matter how bad it might seem, Scripture says this. He said, I'll never forsake you or leave you alone. Don't leave you. He's going to be right there. Praise God. So when it gets hard, I want you to know he's with you. When it's easy, he's with you. He's a God who's with us no matter what. And so I want to encourage you. We've come a long way this year. I want you to know, God is not finished with you yet. He's still working on us. And as one of the ministers in our congregation would say, if you're still alive, it means that your assignment is still on. Amen. So you keep pursuing and keep seeking God. No matter how it looks or what's going on, God will bless you. Above all that you're able to ask or think. The Lord bless you real good. And look forward to a, a better and brighter year in 2021. Amen. 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 We thank you for the word. And we thank God. Amen. For Pastor Coleman. Amen. And this concludes our service, except we have one more song. But our prayer is, is that you've had that of a good Christmas. And not only that, we're praying that you have a better New Year. May God bless you in, is my prayer. And we're going to ask this time to come in this time. You have